Hello, welcome to Epicenter Bitcoin, the show which talks about the technologies, projects, and startups driving decentralization and the global cryptocurrency revolution. My name is Sébastien Couture. And I'm Brian Fabian Crane. We're here today with uh, Daniel Pellet of GEMS and Tom uh, Kieser of Coinify. Now, I'm really excited about today's episode. I spent quite a bit of time reading about GEMS today. And I think it's particularly interesting because I think anyone who's been in Bitcoin for a while has heard the, the idea of a, a killer app. Uh, and the idea is to have something that people really want to use that maybe don't care about creating a new world currency or something. And that perhaps could fuel that mainstream adoption. Uh, and reading about James, thinking about James, uh, James, I think this is one of the best candidates of, for that, uh, perhaps the best that I've come across. So I, I'm really excited about going into that today. It's a super interesting project. And uh, it's, it's great to have you guys on. Thanks for joining us. So perhaps, uh, Daniel, uh, do you want to get started uh, briefly introducing yourself and um, also the project, GEMS? Sure. Uh, thank you for having me. Happy to be here. Um, my name is Daniel Pellet. I am 28. I'm located uh, in Israel, um, in Tel Aviv. <clears throat> I wasn't one of the early adopters. Um, I joined the Bitcoin ecosystem uh, a little bit more than uh, a year ago when it was uh, getting uh, a lot of traction. And after um, understanding the potential of uh, blockchain technology, I was really fascinated with it and started learning uh, everything I could about it and regarding other altcoins also, which have uh, innovations in them. And we started the project, GEMS, um, right after counterparty um, crowdfund period, the proof of burn period. Um, their protocol of building a secondary platform uh, on top of the Bitcoin blockchain and opening a lot of uh, uh, new innovating uh, options uh, really inspired us. And we wanted to make a product that uh, can utilize um, counterparty platform in order to bring uh, Bitcoin to a wider audience. So we had uh, two goals in mind. Our first goal when we started with this, um, we thought, um, what is the best way to bring uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency to mainstream users? And after thinking about that, um, we, got, we realized that uh, in order for that to happen, uh, the user experience has to be very, very simple and very, very intuitive. And the best um, example of that is uh, WhatsApp. It's instant messaging. If I try currently to bring a new user to um, the Bitcoin ecosystem, it's not easy. I go to blockchain uh, info. I open them a Bitcoin wallet. I need to explain about the public key and private key, about security, about Google Authenticator. It's not an intuitive process, even to people our age. And trying to explain it to older people, to my younger brother or my parents, um, is very difficult. But uh, instant messaging, uh, social media, WhatsApp, it's something everybody is used to. Is all of us are already using it. So if you can take um, Bitcoin into a mobile application, it's something that can be viral and usable uh, very easily. So uh, we copied WhatsApp uh, model. Our application looks uh, very similar to it. Um, WhatsApp was successful because the username um, is your mobile number. So they were able to grow very quickly. Everybody was able to invite their uh, friends to join the network and see when they join because of that. So with GEMS, um, your username is your mobile number, but it's also an uh, alias to your Bitcoin wallet. So the registration process um, takes only 10 seconds. Um, you get a passphrase um, to your Bitcoin wallet, which is also a GEMS wallet, obviously, because we build it on top of a counterparty. And automatically, you can start uh, using uh, GEMS just by uh, participating in the network. You receive GEMS, which you can start sending to your friends, um, just like we do with the Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency. So it makes this process of opening an account um, very, very simple. 
The second thing we had in mind is um, because we went to social messaging and social network, is how can we actually incentivize users to join our network? Obviously, WhatsApp is very successful, and same with the Telegram and WeChat and other applications. So we had to have an edge. It's not enough to have a, a messaging app uh, with a, a Bitcoin wallet. We wanted to give our users uh, something extra. So um, in order to do that, we reward the users for their participation. If you compare it to WhatsApp, which have uh, more than 400 million users, and they sold for 19 billion, um, the users didn't get a lot out of it. Obviously, we get a good project, a good uh, product, a free product, uh, which we are happy to use. Um, the same with Facebook, but all the revenue and all the success goes to a small group of uh, founders or creators, even though the users are the one that producing all the content. Users are worth um, a lot to any social network. We can see it with uh, Instagram and WhatsApp and uh, Snapchat and all the rest. So our, under our model, um, when you invite people to the network, you get rewarded with gems. And when you participate in the network, you get rewarded with gems. So the value goes straight to the user and not to the company. We don't cut a profit uh, from the share there. So um, before uh, before we kind of go deeper into uh, James, uh, I just wanted to give uh, Tom a, a brief chance to introduce himself. So we'll come back to to Tom later, especially when we talk about the crowd sale. Uh, but, but Tom, do you want to very briefly introduce yourself and maybe also Coinify? Although for those who are more interested in Coinify, uh, you can also check out an episode we did about six weeks ago, perhaps, uh, with the CEO of uh, of Coinify, Tom Ding. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Uh, yeah, I'd like to you know thank thank you guys for you know having me here as well. Um, yeah, so uh, we're from Coinify, where we will be uh, hosting the Gems uh, token sale, uh, launching December 1st. So um, as they were saying, you know, as we get uh, further into the show and talk about some more of the details of the crowd sale, I'll be happy to fill in and uh, explain anything. But um, we'll be hosting the Gems sale uh, starting December 1st. Um, we have some invites rolling out beforehand, so um, get in touch with us if that interests you. But yeah, we'll, t we'll get into more details afterwards. Um, cool. Thanks so much for, for joining us as well. So there's, there's one thing I thought was interesting, Daniel, about what you were saying, is that you came from this idea of facilitating Bitcoin adoption. So when you came up with the idea of GEMS, is that where you started? Is you really asked, like, what, how can we bring Bitcoin to the masses? Uh, and then it's like, oh, maybe WhatsApp and a social messaging tool versus... Uh, how can I build, for example, a, a great Bitcoin startup or a great startup in general, and then you sort of add uh, the cryptocurrency on, star, uh, on top of it. But uh, you really, the original motivation for you was, was the achieving adoption of cryptocurrencies. Is that correct? Yes, um, definitely. Because, you know, I was um, following, we were following uh, a lot of uh, coin, coins, especially in the altcoins. Every one, two days, there's a new altcoin with a new blockchain. Um, some of them do add uh, innovation, which is uh, it's important because um, it's hard to innovate right now in the Bitcoin uh, blockchain because uh, the, big coin, uh, the big market cap, so the core developers are very careful with their changes. So it's good to have uh, altcoins to, to try to do innovative stuff, but a lot of the of the different altcoins don't bring a lot of innovations and don't add too much to the Bitcoin ecosystem. So we wanted to do to be different. We especially wanted to build uh, on top of counterparty to utilize um, um, the the Bitcoin blockchain. If you compare um, counterparty tokens to other altcoins. Every new altcoin that create a new blockchain, they have to protect it. And in order to protect it, they have to incentivize uh, the miners. Um, so all the inflation of their currency is, uh, is going towards the, the protection. But because we're using a counterparty and the Bitcoin 
uh, blockchain, we can use uh, the inflation in our model to incentivize users for the things we actually want and not just for uh, mining. If we take, uh, example, Litecoin, you know, they have a uh, more than 1,100 um, gigash of uh, mining. It's a lot of uh, money being wasted to protect the, the blockchain. But I'm not sure how much it helps for Litecoin adoption or for increasing the user base. So under our model, we're utilizing the Bitcoin blockchain uh, security, security in order to um, protect uh, the James um, ecosystem, but we can actually um, reward users uh, for their participation and for increased adoption of our token. So you mentioned you guys are using counterparty. Can you go a little bit into that? Because uh, is the gems currency running on top of counterparty, uh, or is it just a crowd sale? Yeah, um, so there's actually uh, a token which is called uh, GEMS, which is running uh, on top of a counterparty, and counterparty is on top of the Bitcoin blockchain. Counterparty um, provides you the possibility to create an asset um, over the over counterparty, over Bitcoin, and then you can utilize it by, uh, by giving it value and building a product around it. So this is what uh, we are doing. It's important to note that um, gems and bitcoins inside the gems application have a different uh, use case um, because um, bitcoin users that download the gems application, the utility that they will enjoy is obviously a bitcoin uh, wallet and the ability to send uh, bitcoins to their friends' uh, usernames and not uh, bitcoin addresses, which makes everything much, much simpler uh, and more, uh, more uh, easy uh, user-friendly. But GEMS are more directed to the new uh, audience uh, entering the bitcoin ecosystem. Most of them um, don't have uh, bitcoins, obviously. Um, so just by downloading the app, and inviting their friends and using it, they get rewarded with gems, which they can start using, uh, you know, to uh, send, it, send each other unsolicited messages or to pay uh, for uh, products or anything we, we, we want to do. Same as we do with Bitcoins, but they get rewarded just for their participation. So it's much easier for them to start using cryptocurrency. We all know that once you do the the first uh, transaction that you see how fast it is and there is no boundaries and the fee is minimal and everything we are not used to with the uh, with normal uh, fiat currency and um, then you, your attraction towards uh, cryptocurrency uh, becomes much much bigger and because your wallet is also a bitcoin wallet it's not a problem for people to start uh, sending you bitcoin to the same uh, wallet address uh, so you can use uh, gems and bitcoins for the different use cases. So I think what's important to take away here is that what gems really creates is is, val is the currency that really has value because it brings a, a feature set to its users uh, which other altcoins perhaps uh, don't like like Litecoin like you mentioned or other coins that aren't very aren't used very much uh, don't uh, in, f in effect. Yes, exactly. Um, the way we bring value to the token is by uh, inside the application utility. Most of uh, altcoins, their only use is as a is a payment. But uh, gem tokens is much more. Uh, of, uh, it's much more. It's actually a product. It's being used inside the application for um, for sending uh, unsolicited messages and uh, advertising uh, to people that are not your friends. So it's very simple. It actually solves a lot of spam problems that uh, social networks uh, usually have. Um, so to make things clear, sending messages to your friends uh, is obviously free because they are your friends. You want to contact them. But sending messages to people that are not on your friends list will actually cost you gems. And this opens up a, a very interesting possibility and use cases. Uh, which we can go into later. Let's, yeah, just uh, before we go into that, and I, I agree it's super interesting, let's um, 
let's talk a little bit more about the technical side. So, as as far as I understand, uh, normal gems transactions. So I I send my friends some gems, etc. Those are off-chain transactions. Um, so can you explain a bit when are transactions on-chain? Uh, when are they off-chain? Um, as a user, let's say I have a substantial amount of gems. Maybe I invest a lot, or I, I help a lot of people sign up for the network in the beginning. Um, is there a way for me, for example, to take uh, to save my gems out of the app? Let's say, are are they going to be paper wallets, or could you put it in a normal counter wallet, uh, send it uh, somewhere else, or are they sort of in that closed ecosystem of the gems app? Um. No, so basically what we did, we took a counter wallet and we modified it in order for it to work uh, inside our GEMS uh, mobile application. So the passwords you get um, for your GEMS wallet, uh, GEMS Bitcoin wallet, can be usable also on a counter wallet, on the web wallet. So uh, you'll be able to transfer uh, your gems to uh, the gems application mm. or to hold them inside Counter Wallet or to hold them uh, inside Coinify uh, website. They also have a built-in uh, token uh, wallet, uh, which is uh, much more simplistic than a Counterparty because Counterparty are giving users a lot of other features which are not uh, specifically relevant uh, to tokens. So you can, uh, you're able to hold them anywhere you want. The way we build gems is that, so, yes? Sorry, I, I cut you off. Um, so that's a HD wallet, correct? Yes. When you curate your uh, okay. wallet, you're the only one holding your passphrase. It's not saved anywhere uh, on our servers or anything like that, it's your responsibility to write it down and to save it in a safe location. You don't have to um, enter it every time you enter the GEMS application. Uh, it's enough to, to put a pin inside. But let's say you lose your iPhone or your mobile phone, uh, you will need that passphrase in order to uh, create a wallet under a new iPhone. And then the other ones, your other phone will get locked because it's uh, it's uh, it's close to a specific phone, and once you open the new one uh, with the passphrase, uh, you'll be able to redeem your gems there. Would would there be some way to do some sort of a multi-signature uh, model where you would hold one uh, key and the user would hold a his personal key and then the backup key? I asked this because last week we interviewed uh, Bitgo, which is you know, who's doing this for uh, for Bitcoin holdings. Is this something that you could implement as an added layer? Of security to uh, to to basically eliminate. I mean, reduce the 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 um, the chance of someone losing their keys and not having access to their to their wallet. Um, it's definitely something we can explore. We know a couple of uh, companies in this uh, field that are specifically expertizing in uh, in multisig uh, wallets and they are selling their technology as white label. Uh, right now we are concentrating on uh, our own things like uh, advertising and giving uh, value and use to the GEMS tokens inside the application, but it is something we are looking into or we can look into uh, with other companies in order to have uh, maximum security to our users. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a it's a security thing, but it's also a usability thing uh, because because having having a key phrase is something that perhaps not a lot of people are used to, in the sense that most people are used to using passwords. And I agree that it is uh, best practice to enforce people to use a higher level of security password than like something that you you're normally use on every website. But I think that for a lot of people coming into the Gem Secret system, having never had to touch cryptocurrency or having to deal with a wallet or a counter wallet or how that works uh, and being used to the passphrase thing, uh, that might be a little, a little jarring for some people. Yeah. What are your sure. thoughts on that? For sure, and that's why um, logging into your phone once um, you created your wallet, it's only with a pin. Uh, it's not comfortable to write down the passphrase every time, and it's not needed because it's a physical phone 
that adds protection um, to the user, and they will actually need to steal the, the phone and enter the PIN code. If they want to try to steal the, the money using a, a web wallet, they will have to know the, the passwords. Uh, um, but it's, it's important to note that, you know, the way I see um, web wallet, um, mobile uh, wallets, it's just like uh, how I see wallets that uh, are holding cash in our everyday life. I, I would not. I would put most of my savings, um, you know, in a cold storage, and then I would put uh, a little bit of bitcoins, maybe on an online uh, wallet, and then I would put uh, uh, the list in an actual uh, mobile wallet. It's because each uh, each wallet adds uh, more protection. So the same with uh, regular users. They will download the GEMS application. They will start using it. They will start uh, earning GEMS, uh, which have value, but uh, it's not their life saving, obviously. And as long as they start uh, learning about the crypto and the ecosystem, um, they will realize that once they, they get a, a bigger amount of GEMS or once they want to buy uh, some Bitcoins or get some Bitcoin from their friends, they will need to learn more about those other most secure uh, options. Obviously, you're not going to have a thousand dollars in your in your wallet when you walk in the street. The same shouldn't be with your uh, Bitcoin mobile wallet. Absolutely, uh, this is all very interesting, and uh, we'll get to talk to about a lot more in just a minute. But before we do that, we'd like to mention uh, good friends at Fairlay. Fairlay is a Bitcoin prediction market where you can place predictions on the likelihood of sport events, the Bitcoin price, current affairs, and a lot more of things. Uh, and uh, if you if your predictions are correct, well, you actually earn money. And so uh, Brian can perhaps go into some detail as to how Fairly works. Yeah, so, so the basic idea of Fairly, uh, it's, it's of course, uh, it comes a little bit from the sort of Bitcoin side and that it's a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. So it's a marketplace for predictions. Um, where, uh, like, you're not taking a position against the house, but against other people. So it's interesting because um, one can uh, look at a lot of uh, actual events that are happening, and one can see what are people thinking, what positions are they are taking. So we asked them uh, uh, just before this episode that they create uh, also a prediction on gems. So you can actually uh, take a, a position on the success of the GEMS crowd sale. So uh, I hope that uh, at the end of this episode you will be uh, better informed than most people and perhaps you will be able to take a better prediction on that. Uh, so the, the, the statement there is um, the GEMS pre-sale will raise more than 1,500 BTC. That's exactly 50% of, of the goal. Um, and uh, yeah, you can take that prediction. I think there's been about 40 predictions made, and and actually, uh, it's uh, also slightly in favor of no, which uh, I don't know. I think they will reach it. So I, I took the other prediction, but we will see. So um, if you're interested, and of course there are a lot of other things like the Bitcoin price, mining difficulties, sporting events, and things like that. So if you are interested, uh, head over to fairly.com/epicenter. Uh, oh, you have uh, Sebastian. You have the the page. Uh, yeah, I was just showing. I was just showing the gems presale. Uh, yeah, uh, so you can head page. over to uh, fairly.com. Yeah. So uh, the the domain is f a i r l a y dot com. Uh, you can sign up there, deposit some bitcoins, uh, and give it a try. So. Um, we want to thank them a lot for their support of Epicenter Bitcoin. So, so coming back to the marketing. So moving on. Oh, coming back to the marketing aspect of Fairlay, because I mean, I mean, I want to. Kind of bring in marketing, uh, uh, user experience, product design, and that whole thing. Uh, for those of you listening, we're having a bit of a delay, so sometimes Brian comes in a few seconds late. Um, I'm interested. What are some of the selling points that you plan to put forth to sell, like in a sense, gems 
uh, as a superior alternative to Facebook and WhatsApp. I mean, I think we could probably there are probably some that are obvious, but there are network effects, and I think those are going to be hard to uh, to break up. I mean, like people use Facebook, people will use WhatsApp. Uh, how do you plan on getting people to come into to this ecosystem in masses? Yeah, so um, obviously um, we can't compare ourselves even closely to uh, WhatsApp or Facebook or WeChat um, user base, and we are not uh, trying to. Um, obviously, we'll be more than happy to, uh, you know, in the future, and uh, to maybe, um, you know, have a threat on them. But what we're looking at right now is actually the the Bitcoin ecosystem and other uh, alternative uh, currencies. Most altcoins out there they don't have a big uh, user base. I think uh, except for Dogecoin, um, NXT, um, XCP maybe. Um, a lot of the other altcoins um, are, are having a very hard time to build their user base. And even uh, Bitcoin um, is still in a very, very early stages of uh, maturity and becoming uh, mainstream. So um, our, 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 our goal is to really reach, uh, for GEMS, um, 100,000 of users. If you can get to a few million users, that will be a huge uh, success for the Bitcoin uh, ecosystem and for cryptocurrency. So our goals... Um, you know, we know there will be very uh, a lot of uh, difficulties and harders along the way, but uh, we are very committed to this project. And the added values that we bring the the users compared to those applications is uh, one putting them in the center. You know, uh, there is a famous saying that if a product uh, is completely free, usually you are the product. And because WhatsApp and Facebook are making money and a lot of money. Uh, out of their users because they can take their um, their uh, content and their and the users um, um, information and to use it for the advertising which are, they are the beneficiaries. So we are trying to take it to a different location of actually rewarding the users themselves. And I think there is a big trend in that direction, and it's something users relate to. We can see that with the uh, Elo which started a social network uh, not built uh, around advertising at all. They have signed a contract saying there will not be any advertising, and they're getting a, a very big support. And same with the Tsu, which started uh, social networking, also uh, paying the users, and they're getting a lot of support. So users are looking uh, for something different than the normal uh, status quo, which is that and they get a free product, um, but um, they are not a part of the of the of the of the network of the social network. Uh, users relate to if they are uh, in a partnership with the network uh, they use, um, it brings them a lot of uh, added value. That's uh, one. And the second thing is actually bringing the uh, the blockchain advantages to the users. Uh, we the, for us we are very used to it that uh, sending value. Uh, between uh, our friends and overseas um, is very simple, the fee is minimal and so on using uh, Bitcoin, but most users haven't experienced this feeling uh, yet. And we think that once they do it, um, it, will, uh, it will actually uh, have a big uh, benefit of using our mobile application compared to uh, even Snapchat that, you know, they introduce payments, but you have to connect your uh, bank account, and you have to pay higher fees, and you have to give your anonymous. Uh, you have to be completely public, and and so on about it. Uh, in the end, there isn't any uh, value uh, value sending um, ecosystem as good as bitcoins, and we just need to introduce it to mainstream people. So uh, I I agree with you that there perhaps was as a trend towards. Uh, well, a trend where people are starting to get annoyed with advertising. People are starting to get annoyed with uh, with um, uh, attacks on their privacy and things like that. Uh, do you think that that is? I mean, basically, what I mean is, it, it only takes 
a Facebook or a WhatsApp to copy that sort of model where they already have uh, a, a substantial user base to bring those existing users into that new type of model. I mean, if it is a trend, you can also imagine that Facebook and WhatsApp and others will also follow that trend. Uh, how do you think startups I, like I yours and, and, and others that may enter this space would uh, would would be able to compete? Would they would they have an advantage, whereas they are sort of like the underdog in in the eco, in the ecosystem, or or would those large players have the advantage of having existing users? First of all, I don't necessarily agree with you that they have an incentive to change their model. They're making a lot of money out of the current uh, status quo, and they would like to continue with it as much as possible. If this trend uh, that uh, James is part of uh, takes off and you know Facebook uh, changes their model, we'll be very happy. You know, we made a, a change, just like uh, we see it now with the Western Union. You know, they are still charging um, five to fifty dollars for every wire transaction, and uh, they are making the remittances uh, network. Uh, there's billions in it, and they don't want to give it away, obviously. Uh, but you know, Bitcoin is starting this change because it's taking off because it's a, a very a big com a competition to the regular status quo. So if we can make them change it, um, we we've done a, you know a very big percentage of our mission. And if not, I hope uh, we'll be able to take them down, just like uh, big companies that uh, you know didn't. Uh, uh, um, build themselves to be handled with changes uh, went down. Uh, we see it uh, many times during history. Now, with, with regards to bringing people into the ecosystem, there seems to be a a push towards building like blockchains, apps, and services. And I I, I agree that this is the the sort of the, the the good strategy is what you're doing is you're you're building an app which essentially brings people into the Bitcoin ecosystem without them really having to know that they're in the Bitcoin ecosystem. The functionality is transparent, and I mean it's transparent for them that they're that they're using a blockchain. Um, moving forward, like what are um, some of the sort of advantages that people will, I mean you mentioned this a while ago, you know, being able to pay and things like that, what are some of the other advantages that people, uh, just regular people that aren't necessarily technically savvy or not uh, in the ecosystem would uh, would benefit from uh, being in, in the, in using a cryptocurrency based uh, app like uh, Gems? Yeah, for sure. So one of the biggest problems with any social network is um, there's a big problem of uh, spam. Uh, like you said, a lot of people care about their uh, privacy. If I, uh, if you would uh, give your uh, Gmail, uh, your email, uh, you, you wouldn't be happy throwing your email, you know, uh, over the internet and signing uh, everywhere with your normal email because there's a big chance uh, it will get into the wrong hands and you will start getting uh, spam. The same with your mobile number. You keep it quite private because uh, you don't want to, to it to be completely public. So what we introduced uh, with GEMS is actually a good solution for this. Uh, you can register with your mobile number. You give it out only to your friends. But you can give your hashtag uh, username um, to anybody. You can have it on your blog or in the internet or any location you want because you won't be able to get spammed. In order for people um, to send you an unsolicited message, people that are not your friends, they will actually have to pay you in gems. So let's say um, you're, a, for example, a celebrity. You're using uh, Instagram or something like that. You're getting uh, spam, uh, not spam, but a lot of people are using your hashtag. It's not possible to actually um, get in, in, in contact uh, with that person. What we can do, you as a user, you can say anybody that wants to send me an unsolicited message has to pay me uh, 100 gems for order for me to get it. And you can say I want to receive only up to five unsolicited messages a day. This means that we can control um, the, um, you know, you can control uh, your, the way you want to be reached by people that are not your friends. 
um, they actually pay for your attention in gyms, and this can become very viral because there's a lot of people, you know, for example, I want to talk to, I, or I would like to get the opportunity to talk to, or I don't know their uh, personal details, but if there was a way for me to get in touch with them directly, uh, and I would need to pay for it, which is okay because it's for their intention, uh, this can become a very viral and a very good use case uh, inside the social network. Which is so this, is, this is a question that I, that I had, a, and uh, after uh, Brian had a, another question, is uh, does the user decide what his attention is worth? Is that what you're saying, basically? Is I decide I want, like, this is how many gems it'll cost for someone unsolicited to contact me? Yes, um, you can decide how much it costs, and you can also decide uh, how many messages you want to receive. So let's say, for example, um, you want to receive only three messages a day. Um, there will be a bidding system. Let's say 100 people sent you, wants to send you a message, and some of them bid uh, 1,000 gems, and some bid 500 gems. So you will get only the top uh, three bidders uh, to contact you. So you have a minimal uh, um, number of gems you want to receive. And it, the maximum goal is a bidding system very similar to Google AdWords, that everybody is competing uh, on the same thing. Um, something just occurred to me before, which I think is, is really fascinating. So um, I presume most of you know, but, but for those who don't know the sort of the background of, of proof of work uh, that, that was developed by Adam Back, of course, the idea originally was that it was going to be some sort of spam protection. So when I would send an email out, I would have to do some work, essentially mining on my own computer, uh, send that uh, proof of that work with the email, and the idea was that then this would become costly to send email, and it wouldn't be economical anymore um, to send spam. And that never caught on because, uh, I guess, large... Um, email bulk mail sender didn't want to do that, uh, so I think it's it's super fascinating that we're kind of coming back to that, and we're actually now using cryptocurrency uh, as a spam protection in in this case. And what's also fascinating is that in a sense here we actually do have it uh, backed by proof of work, because the gems first were of course purchased or at least a large part of it uh, with Bitcoin, which again were mined. Uh, with uh, with the exact mining algorithm that Adam Back uh, developed, so that's a, is something that occurred to me, which is uh, extremely fascinating. How sort of a, over a lot of um, around a lot of corners we have sort of ended up now with this uh, at a point where a proof of work is actually used for spam protection. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I agree with you. Um, it's gotten a little bit to a point that uh, we can see it at least with the Bitcoin blockchain that there, the minimal fee, um, obviously it's much lower than uh, if you compare it to Western Union or any fiat uh, monetizing system, uh, money transferring system, um, but still the Bitcoin blockchain uh, makes it hard um, at least under our model, to reward the uh, mainstream uh, users or to have the scalability to be able to approach a, a big user base with our daily airdrop. So what we are doing, we actually built uh, uh, we build a, a you know a, a hybrid system. That on one side um, we have off chain, so all the the rewards, the gems reward for participating in the network and for adding fr friends to the networks, are being done off chain. But at any moment, anybody can transfer these gems onto the Bitcoin uh, ecosystem uh, blockchain by uh, doing a Bitcoin uh, tax ID. So we can utilize the blockchain uh, protection and decentralization. But we can also incentivize users on a mass-based scalability uh, using the off-chain technology. So we're utilizing both right now. Um, so.
So I think we can move on to the, the GEMS pre-sale, uh, which is a, a very big topic as well. Um, Tom, do you want to briefly introduce uh, how the GEMS pre-sale is going to work? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, the way we have the GEMS token pre-sale structured is that the uh, public GEMS uh, token launch will be on December 1st at uh, 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, actually. So the way that the actual pricing for the GEMS has worked is that during the um, initial pre-invite phase that we're currently in, um, the gems are set to 17,225 X gems per BDC um, funded. Um, this is a 2,250 uh, X gem bonus on top of the base, which is uh, 15,000 gems per BDC. And um, this carries for the initial invite period along with the first 48 hours of the public sale so that everybody's kind of on the same playing level here. Um, there's no, there's really no competitive advantage to being into this early invite phase. Um, we're just kind of rolling people into the platform slowly um, before the actual public sale. So um, de December 1st, the floodgates you know, will open though and um, all community members will be available to purchase X gems. Um, we have a built-in Coinify counter wallet, so um, the purchase flow is actually, it's all automated, and it's about two clicks of a button, so um, when, when you have access to the platform, it'll be, you know, purchase, you scan the QR code, and the purchase flow is automatic, and um, XGEMs are instantly credited to your account, so um, we're, pretty, we're pretty pumped over at Coinify to finally get this up and going. Um, you know, we are really looking forward to GEMS, we really think Daniel has a great team over there, we're, really just excited and supportive and um, yeah so you know keep an eye out uh, we're gonna be rolling invites out this month along with uh, the actual launch on the first so I was interested in, in this token distribution uh, so there, there are 50, 000, 50 million tokens which will be sold in a pre-sale and there's 30 million in an airdrop which will be allocated to airdrops and incentives, things like that. And then there's about 12, mil 12 million for marketing and promotion, and then 8 million for the development team. So that totals to 100 million. Uh, how did you come to, to these numbers? How did you budget this distribution? And also, maybe just kind of briefly mention in some of the earlier discussions on Bitcoin Talk, there was mention of 100 billion, or sorry, 10 billion uh, total coins. Uh, why, why did you scale that back to 100 million? Yep. Um, the way we calculated the, the, the number of uh, tokens we want to have um, is based on uh, user adoption. The hardest part is you know, to grow from zero users to 1,000 users or from 1,000 users to 10,000 users. And those are the hardest parts and from 10 to 100. Uh, if you get uh, more viral, obviously there is a very big uh, network effect, but the beginning is the most uh, difficult. So in the beginning we did thought about starting with a very, very big uh, number like uh, 10 billion, and that if we do reach uh, hundreds of millions or, of users, um, each user we still feel like he's holding uh, a lot of gems, it's more uh, psych from a psychology uh, point of view. Um, but then later on, we did decide to move to a smaller number because we understand um, that the hardest part is in the beginning. And if we do achieve uh, the later stage uh, mass adoption, we can always um, change uh, how you see the, the gems value portrayed inside the application. Like we have uh, bitcoins and people were thinking to switching to uh, milli bitcoins uh, when it became over $1,000. Okay, Every token see. is divisible by uh, uh, a decimal point, so we don't have really problems of scalability. But we did want to give uh, mainstream users um, a, a feel that they are holding a, a good amount of gems, but not a huge amount uh, of gems, uh, which is unnecessary in the beginning. And also to point out, um, the airdrop, we don't want to get to uh, decimal fractions. And the way it works is that every day, 27,500 gems uh, are dropped uh, for users for their participation and uh, adding people to the network. So let's say you added um, 10 users to the network and I added 
10 users to the network on day one, then we will split the airdrop of 27,500 between us. Um, so we incentivize early adopters of the network because let's say in the beginning it's 10 new people joining a day, by after a month it can already be 100 users uh, joining per day, but the airdrop is still a fixed number of 27,500, uh, which means that only if more than 27,500 users join every day, then each user will receive a fraction of a gem which is something we don't want to get into, but it will take time until we get this kind of uh, uh, growth. So we feel quite comfortable with the numbers, and obviously it's divisible by age, so we can always play with how we portray it. Okay. It, it occurred to me, though, when thinking about this airdrop, that there might be uh, there might be opportunities for abuse where if... So maybe I don't understand how those verification works, but uh, if I can just create as many gem wallets as I want, wouldn't I then be able to invite as many people as I want and take more of that bonus away? Or is there some kind of a mechanism there that I'm not understanding that would, would not but prevent people from doing that? Yes, so we actually are um, you know, thinking about those uh, problems with abuse and civil attacks. So we, we build uh, we're building an algorithm that um, can uh, find this kind of abuse and each user uh, his uh, trustworthy score is uh, actually um, built from a, a couple of different um, um, different elements. Uh, for example, I'll just uh, mention a few of them, how we flag uh, fraudulent activity. So one is your account age. Obviously, in the beginning, when you just open an account, you start with the initial uh, low trust score. If you decide to be completely anonymous, uh, uh, you're not using or connecting your mobile number, again, you will be uh, with a very low trust score. Um, the other things we check is how many gems you have available in the account. If you have, uh, it uh, reflects on your trust score. Um, we can do a user uh, f usage frequency patterns to see if you just created it and you're sending um, one message or you're actually uh, using it uh, on a daily basis. Um, if we feel that you have a very low trust score, we, s we can send you a push message to fill a, a capture in order to, to make sure it's not a bot and it's an actual user. We check your uh, communication network with your friends. If you're talking with people that are, have a high, high score, um, then obviously there's a bigger chance that you're a real person. If your relationship connections, um, uh, you know, if they look uh, good, if, if you're connected just to bots, which all of them have low trust scores, obviously it will reflect uh, on your trust score. And um, also, there is a, the community can flag if uh, there is a bot or something like that that's trying to speak with a reputable, uh, with somebody that has high reputation, and he feels like he's not speaking with a real person, he can obviously flag him uh, as being a, a bot. So we take these uh, different criteria and we build a trust score uh, around each user, um, and only if you're above a certain threshold, you're eligible to, use, uh, to receive gems from the airdrop. So it's not as okay. easy to just create bots and uh, and game the system. That's that's it, really interesting, and, and I think it's a lot better than uh, probably some of the some of the abuse mechanisms that are in place on on platforms like Skype, where essentially there are, there are none. So I think that's really good. Yeah, because Skype is not giving any um, you know value for participation or re daily rewards and so on. So we are much more careful. Um, with how uh, uh, the airdrop system work, and even if somebody is able to game the system, um, the airdrop is fixed uh, to a daily amount, so we will be able to track him uh, without uh, losing too much of the gems reserve, uh, because it's not like he, if he creates even one million users on a specific day that he will get more than um, the daily airdrop. So we're doing a, a lot of protection. Uh, I think uh, mainly mainstream users will attach their mobile number because they want to see their friends that join the network and they want to invite their friends. And this by itself adds a lot of, uh, 
a lot of protection, but we do have uh, other measures if people want to stay completely anonymous in order to um, to be able to build their top trust for. Okay. Now, coming back just to the crowd sale briefly, uh, so uh, part of the so mechanism with regards to selling uh, the just the token sale is that so there's there's 50 million tokens uh, allocated for the XGEM uh, token sale, and what you said is that any unsold tokens after the end of the crowd sale will be burned uh, by being sent to an uns uh, verified unspendable address. Um, this seems to me different from other crowd sales, perhaps where we've seen that like the fate of remaining coins is voted by the community or things like that. Uh, can you explain your why you decided to do it this way? Yeah, um, obviously the crowdfund is very important for uh, Gem's success. Uh, we, we are trying to build a, a very high-end product. We're developing the iOS version in Objective-C in native, and also the Android is going to be developed in, in, in Java in native. And it requires uh, funds to maintain the network and develop the network and all the ideas um, that we have lined up. And we don't think that uh, um, um, uh, giving the unbought gems on a based on a proportional uh, ratio is a is a good decision because basically what it it brings in the end of the day is that everybody is a little bit um, you know on the fence looking what other people are doing because for them it doesn't matter if uh, the crowdfund if uh, reaches uh, 300 BTC or or 1,000 BTC, they just look at their percentage of their holding. Um, so in order to incentivize people to uh, buy gems and to take uh, and to uh, have a, a bigger um, vested interest in the project and to help us promote it, which is a big part of doing a crowdfund and not going to venture capital, we actually want to build a user base with a vested interest and the project that will help us uh, promote it and uh, and uh, and reach uh, uh, their friends and, uh, and mainstream people, um, we think it's a better way of conducting a crowdfund instead of just uh, saying we're selling 50% and it doesn't matter the amount we raise because it gives people the wrong incentive during the crowdfund. So. One thing I think that's kind of interesting if we look at, at this, uh, and you know, maybe Tom, you guys have a, an opinion on this as well, is that if, if we talk of 100 million uh, gems being issued, uh, then if I understand correctly, right, so 50 million will go to the investors, then 30 million will be given out to new users and people signing up new users, essentially a uh, rewarding activity. Uh, another 12 million also sort of community giving out to people. Uh, so that just leaves 8 million, so 8% essentially for uh, for the founding team. Uh, and it's of course interesting if we contrast that to um, regular startups where it, typically I would say after a, a first a funding round um, uh, after first funding round, people are, tend to be left with, I don't know, 70% or uh, things like that. Uh, can you uh, talk a little bit about how you, know, how you uh, arrive at uh, having a very a small ownership percentage of, of those tokens and um, how you feel that is going to influence incentives in the long run because, of course, what happens, for example, when you run out of the BTC you raise here? You won't be able to uh, do another crowd sale of those tokens, right? Yeah, so I think uh, when we deal with the uh, cryptocurrency and uh, tokens and, you know, uh, networks that are being built by the community, Obviously, us as the founders and developers, we are we are leading the effort. But it, it's very important to achieve a, a, a good balance between, uh, you know, uh, the founders' reward and the community reward uh, for participating. One of the, um, you know, a startup usually um, they keep a lot to themselves. 
because they, they are more built around the, them adding the value uh, compared to uh, starting a, an ecosystem with a, a token or cryptocurrency that you are very much uh, supported by the community. Uh, Bitcoin has value only because the users want to use it. Uh, the same with, the, with all the other cryptocurrencies. So you think you need to be uh, very careful uh, with the with the number, and after studying uh, other use cases, um, you know, uh, for example, uh, Mastercoin, J.R. Willard was holding a very very, very big percentage uh, of the total Mastercoins. It makes the community um, think if they if this is the project they want to support. Uh, compared to counterparty, for example, that the distribution was much more, uh, much much better, and you can see the contribution and the ecosystem that was built around counterparty. Uh, so we think uh, this is a, a good number uh, to be in. Uh, I, I don't know how many um, other coins or cryptocurrencies, um, you know. I'm not holding even one percent of, so it's a it's a good number. It, I think it's a number that gives us very motivated, uh, very uh, a big incentive to uh, to deliver the milestones and to achieve the goals we're we're looking for. Yeah. Um. To to go on top of something uh, what Daniel was just talking about with that as well. Um. You know, it's we think it's great that you know. Um, we actually usually, you know, in this usually in this scene and field, you have the issue of the community saying, "Why are the developers taking too much money?" So uh, it's quite interesting to get almost a little bit of the reverse flip side. But we think it's a we think it's a great number to incentive uh, to continue to uh, bring incentive to develop this product. Along with, we really think that these milestone vesting um, periods are really going to help contribute to that as well. Um, because it's not, you know, you get 8% of the stockpile right off from the beginning and you're good to go. Um, you know, Jem's team and Daniel's team needs to uh, continually produce an actual, you know, product and progression to continue get to continue to get the money that's raised in the crowd sale. Um, they, you know, they don't get all the money all at once, so um, there's milestone structures such as the advertising platform, Android release, um, and uh, uh, additional features that um, we also believe will really help keep, you know, gems on track, keep this project high quality, and keep, you know, the development process and the incentive for the project at a very high level for the community. Yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I, I, I was asking that question also sort of provocatively because I do think uh, it's an interesting question, right, where do you balance the incentives for the founders and, and that community thing, which is super important, I totally agree. It's interesting you guys chose a similar number that Ethereum chose. I think it was something like that too, I, I don't remember exactly. Um, and of course the incentive then for you guys as founders is very much to make this huge because if it's not going to be huge then uh, that's not going to be worth a lot of money and and I, I like I think that's also great what you guys are doing on Coinify is that that vesting thing is so important I think that you really have accountability transparency uh, and, and that people can just you know come in and get it uh, and get out and uh, sort of keep their share so um, yeah I, I think I'm, I'm really uh, I'm really excited about what you guys are doing too on, on, on that uh, on the front from Coinify. I think that that can play a really important role in the long run uh, in making sure these crowd sales are run in a good way and in making sure that um, that are trustworthy teams and that we hopefully get um, down the level of scams. So there's a, a one more topic uh, I'd like to come to and um, it's sort of a perennial a perennial topic we keep coming back to again and again. Uh, which is the topic of regulation. So, of course, the question comes up, right? So you have this app now, and, and you're going to send around uh, gems in there. Now, the, do you think of gems as money or not is one question, but, of course, there's also bitcoins to uh, be sent around. So uh, what are your thoughts on the regulation of this? Uh, is that something you guys worry about? Uh, in particular, um, do you think you will have to do KYC at some point that that uh, you know maybe anonymous users won't be allowed to use the app? 
uh, or do you think you may have to limit transaction amounts or things like that? Uh, perhaps you can go a bit into that. Yeah. Um, so it's important to point out uh, two different uh, things. Um, gems is, uh, 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 you know, it's on one side. It's obviously using a blockchain uh, technology, so it's not a, a closed uh, system. Um, the intrinsic value that we are bootstrapping into gems is, is derived from the use as an advertising credit inside the systems that advertisers uh, can use in order to send the unsolicited messages um, to uh, the gems uh, users. And I think that's something um, that is much more exciting for the users because they get paid directly by the advertising. So it's a partnership. It's not uh, usually spam uh, advertising that uh, we're used to. If somebody is willing to pay for your attention, I think the quality will be higher, and there's a bigger chance that you will uh, like to uh, to read or receive a specific uh, targeted uh, materials um, that you're interested with. But from uh, the technical point of view, obviously gems uh, can be used um, um, outside the, the gems application, and if it grows, um, and there is a big uh, user base, and there is liquidity and stability. It might be able to use uh, as a as a paying uh, to pay for for things, just like uh, Bitcoin organically gl uh, grew uh, with the user base and liquidity and so on. We can't um, control this aspect. Um, what we can is add, um, you know, as much as we can features inside. Uh, the Gems mobile applications like um, sharing uh, economy type of activities like crowdfunding and uh, cool features to give uh, users um, usability uh, with the Gems tokens. Um, so there is, needs to be a separation between uh, um, the purpose of Gems inside uh, the mobile application and the outside users um, that people will be able to do um, uh, because um, uh, the blockchain technology um, that uh, the gems tokens uh, is built upon. So um, I, it, you know, down the line, um, you know, it's more uh, consumers or uh, so, um, or more exchanges um, and third-party applications. Um, that will, uh, I think, need to uh, be regulated um, with these uh, policies, as uh, you mentioned, KYC and anti uh, and so on. Yeah, so if, if, if I may uh, paraphrase, maybe uh, the, the way I would describe perhaps uh, the position here is that you say uh, first... A gems is a product, right? It's a, it's used as a product in app. If it has some value somewhere else, you know that's sort of like magic cards that have values elsewhere. You can sell them or or whatever. Uh, and then I guess the other side, as soon as people start using, um, as soon as start if people start using a Bitcoin in it, it's sort of like uh, you guys are just providing the wallet. And in that case, I guess you will fall into a several a, a similar regulatory category as, let's say, a blockchain or info or, or other wallet providers that you know provide the software but don't hold the private keys. Which I think is a, perhaps a good position to have, and, and I can imagine that it uh, prevails. I guess we will always see how crazy uh, it gets in New York with the license and, and similar approaches. Yeah, I think the what um, currently the regulators are trying to put uh, their attention on is the conversion between um, fiat money to uh, Bitcoin or to cryptocurrencies, um, and this is more relevant to um, exchanges and Coinbase and third parties that are providing this uh, infrastructure. Um, inside the application, uh, we have specific uses for gems, tokens, as we, we said, unsolicited messages and advertising and so on. 
Um, so right now, um, it's less uh, less effective on us. Um, so, where are you guys incorporated right now? Is is that something that you've already established, or is that still <laughs> you're still working on that question? Um, no, um, we are organized. Uh, we are incorporated uh, in Israel. Um, the development team uh, is in Israel. Um, we're doing uh, everything we can uh, by the book. Okay. And how has uh, we? I mean, we talked to Manny Rosenfeld a, a few weeks ago about uh, about the ecosystem in Israel. How do you think uh, things will evolve there with regards to you know the government accepting or rejecting uh, cryptocurrencies? Um, there was a inside Bitcoin uh, Tel Aviv uh, two or three weeks ago. So there was a. A uh, representative from the Bank of Israel that talked uh, regarding this question. As I understand it, um, you know there are uh, understanding that there is innovation here. There is a, a chance to empower uh, small businesses, and uh, you know the the movement of uh, value uh, between countries and between the uh, users. So. It seems to me that um, they are studying it carefully, but they are um, looking of ways um, to regulate it in a way that um, won't hurt the, the centralized uh, na uh, nature of, uh, of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And there's a lot of things that uh, this ecosystem can bring to businesses and to uh, applications that weren't available before. Okay. Now, just before we wrap up, uh, I, I'd like to come back to the app, actually, because we've been talking about this app uh, for about, almost an hour, but haven't really uh, talked about the application itself. So you mentioned that it, it, it will look like, like WhatsApp or perhaps Facebook's Messenger. Um, is there anything else that you want to add to that uh, about how, how the app will look and how, how, what will be the experience, essentially, of using the app? Um. Yeah, so um, like I said, uh, we want to keep the user experience as simple as possible that anyone that uh, logs in can uh, are, is able to use it uh, right away. In our opinion, there, um, a dedicated Bitcoin wallet is not uh, good enough for uh, mainstream users because um, you know they might use it once to receive their first Bitcoin, but it won't keep them uh, attached um, to the to the application, but when you bring this added value of a social network of a messenger building uh, built around this uh, Bitcoin or gems uh, wallet, it makes things uh, much more interesting. Um, there's gonna be uh, uh, like in a, in a WhatsApp, you see your messages from your friends. So if you get a uh, promoted messages that somebody paid you gems, it's gonna be highlighted. Uh, differently, so you'll be able to know if it's a, a paid message or a, a regular message. Um, obviously, the wallet uh, will be will display the amount of gems you hold, um, the the value, and the ability to um, send the um, client to client encrypted message, uh, and the ability to send the gems and bitcoins um, is going to be um, very easily uh, portrayed in the in the um, in the in the keyboard, so you be able to uh, easily just as you send a text to send the the BTC or gems to your friends and to other users. Okay, so the app will be available on uh, Android and iOS, but is there going to be a web uh, client as well or a desktop client? Because I mean, a lot of times you're sitting by your computer, right, and not necessarily always uh, on, on a mobile device. Yeah. Um, if the community, if this will be a demand, we can actually implement it uh, very fast. Uh, right now, uh, the, there is a working uh, beta alpha version of the iOS version that we are going to release uh, during the, the crowdfund period. 
and uh, our top priority is uh, is developing the Android application also. If there is there will be a demand for a web uh, a desktop application, we can do that. Um, WhatsApp still don't have a desktop application, so I'm not sure how much the demand is big, but uh, if it is, uh, it will be uh, easy and fast to implement it. Okay, and so it, it seems to me that there are perhaps some interesting opportunities for brands to utilize uh, a platform like Gems. Um, now, two, two things, I guess, one is how do you think brands can use Gems and so as sort of, you know, for from the perspective of new business models, I guess. And uh, also, do you think that in the future there would be some sort of a developer platform where developers could come on, build apps on top of Gems, and perhaps monetize those? I guess I'm thinking about like new business models, new types of uh, ecosystems that we can build on top of this platform. Yep. Um. So uh, one of the the ways we can get uh, advertising uh, active inside the, the application. Um, I, before I I said that um, you will be able to send the unsolicited messages between users. That is something very interesting by itself. But we we also going to have uh, um, advertising uh, page a little bit similar to uh, zero block. That uh, they're getting their feed from uh, Reddit and from the Bitcoin uh, website, so you will be able to select the things that interest you. If it's uh, e-commerce, if it's Bitcoin, or if it's uh, uh, other other things, and the most the it's it's again it's a bidding system to get uh, to be on the on the highest point in this uh, news feed. Um, so this is one way for brands to um, to 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 actually bring awareness um, to what uh, they're doing, and regarding third-party applications, I think it's still uh, obviously we are very uh, we are very supportive, and that's why we are leaving a, a bigger percentage to incentive this kind of uh, contribution. Uh, it's something that haven't been done before that there is a social network built with a token monetiza monetization system inside. So it's a little bit um, um, early to speak about the, the possibilities, but like doing uh, inside the crowdfunding or you know building a, um, a more usability surrounding the, the tokens and groups, and what you can do with it, uh, I think, uh, will be very interesting to see what they, what people come up with, and we are very uh, interested in the community contribution to this. Cool. Well, thanks so much, guys, for joining us today. It was really interesting talking about uh, gems, and I think it's uh, one of those projects that uh, I'll be extremely uh, interested in watching where it goes, how the crowd sale goes, and especially. Uh, how it goes one after it, how people will use it, and especially if we will, we will see that kind of mainstream adoption that we are hoping for. That it will serve as a hopefully as a, as a great tool to introduce people to um, to cryptocurrencies. So uh, thanks so much for joining us today, guys. Um, <laughs> so for those who want to uh, learn more about GEMS, uh, you can go on their website, it's called getgems.org, so that's getgems.org. Uh, really nice website, by the way, like design-wise, I think you guys seem to be uh, m maybe like the, some of the best we've seen in, uh, or I've seen in the Bitcoin space. Um, you can also check out Coinify, especially if you're interested in participating in the, in the, uh, the token sale. Uh, they have a, a blog post there that goes into the economics. Some will weep talk here, but if you are interested in in purchasing some, I recommend you have a look at that. So that's coinify.com. That's coinify with a K. Um, so you can check it out there. And um, thanks so much for listening. So if you you know if you want to support the show, you can do that in a number of ways. You can follow us on Twitter at Epson BTC. Uh, you can also um, uh, subscribe or follow our, uh, our Google Plus page so you will see the next Hangouts coming up 
Um, and uh, you can, of course, also donate to us, which we do appreciate for the work we do. It's uh, epsonbitcoin.com slash tips. Our next Hangout is coming up on Wednesday, November 26th at 7.30 UTC. Now, what's UTC in normal? So 7.30, that would be 7.30 um, GMT, so London time. That would be uh, 8.30 European time. And I think that would be 3.30 uh, Eastern, uh, so New York time, if I'm correct. But that may be wrong. So that will be with, uh, with Solid X. Solid X is a company that uh, does something totally different. And they're trying to uh, sort of get institutional investors to buy Bitcoin, so help them buy Bitcoins and do really rich people that may have some other barriers, especially regulatory kind. Totally different thing, but I think it would be very interesting too. Uh, so uh, yeah, please uh, join us for that one. And uh, thanks so much. We look forward to being back soon.